Hey there guys, welcome to Tech Engineered. Today we're gonna to be doing another five things to consider video, and we're gonna be talking about computer cases, so stay tuned. So if you haven't watched any of the other videos in this series, five things to consider is basically a series where I tell you five kind of topics to think about whenever you're going to buy a certain computer component. So today we're talking about computer cases, so let's go ahead and get started with our first point to think about. The first thing that you need to consider is the form factor or size of the case. Computers come in a number of sizes or form factors. There's a standard ATX mid tower, which is kind of your normal desktop case. You can get micro ATX cases, which are gonna be your smaller, more compact cases. You can get a full tower case, like the one behind me, which is gonna be your large desktop computer. You can get super towers, which are even bigger. So basically, you need to do your research there and figure out like how big of a computer case you need and also understand that motherboard size also goes into account with that because the smaller the case is, the smaller the motherboard has to be. And really anything smaller than an ATX mid tower will not accept a full size ATX motherboard. You'll need a micro ATX board or a mini ITX board for those smaller cases. So do your research and figure out which size of case you would like and then make sure that your motherboard will fit in that case and look at the spec sheets on that. The next thing that you need to consider is cooling support. This kind of has a number of aspects to it. One of them is if you're going with air cooling, you need to make sure that the height of the air cooler will not encounter the side of the side panel of the case. Um, that's a big problem if you get a really tall air cooler, not all cases will fit all air coolers. So you might run into the problem of the air cooler is too tall for the side of your case to be able to go back on, and that would be a major problem. So a lot of case manufacturers will list the maximum height of cooler that you can fit in their case. So look at that and then look at the height of the cooler and make sure that it fits. Another thing is water cooling. You need to make sure that you have enough like fan spots in a row to fit your radiator if you're going to be water cooling. Um, with water block support, that doesn't really matter in a case because water blocks are generally small. Generally what you're going to think about is radiator and making sure that you have enough fan spots for the radiator to fit on them, and then also the thickness of the radiator. If you get a really thick radiator, it might interfere with the motherboard if you mount it on the top of the case or the back of the case. You need to take that into account and make sure that there's enough clearance between the motherboard and the top of the case that the radiator and fans can fit in there. Take a look at that, see what other people have been able to do. That's generally what I do when I'm looking at a new case um, when I'm doing a build for somebody, is I'll just go to like Google Images of the case and see what coolers people have put in it, how thick of a radiator they've been able to fit in it, and kind of go from there. Some manufacturers will tell you that in the spec sheets on the cases, but not all will. And I generally find that Google Images is one of the best ways to kind of look at that and just kind of take a look and see which models of liquid coolers people have put in there and so on. The third thing you need to consider is storage support. Not all cases are created equal, and a lot of them have a lot more storage bays than others. And by storage bays, I mean for like hard drives, solid state drives, all of your uh, storage media. So you need to look for a case that will fit all of the drives that you want. Most people generally have one to two drives, so most cases will work for them. A lot of many ITX cases will only support up to two drives, so that might kind of hinder you there because in like a full tower where I have like 11 hard drive bays, if I run out of room in a hard drive, I can just pop another one in and start dumping things onto it and basically just create more space as I go. So that's just another thing to consider. If you're gonna be a storage hog, you might wanna get a bigger case so that you have more hard drive room. Um, if not, you can probably go with a smaller case with less hard drive room. And some big cases don't have as much hard drive room. A lot of the more cosmetic cases will have less hard drive bays just so that they can clean up the inside of it and make it look less messy. Some like mine have modular bays so you can take out the ones that you don't use. But basically just take a look at that and make sure that you can fit all of your storage that you need into your case. The next thing that you need to look at is the I.O. on the case. Cases have USB ports, headphone ports, microphone ports all on it. So you want to make sure that you have the connectors that you want on the front of the case so that you don't have to reach around to the back of the motherboard to plug in all of your stuff. And nowadays this is even more of a consideration with VR because some cases are offering an HDMI port on the front to where you can just plug your VR headset directly into the front. So if you're planning on doing VR I would really suggest getting a case like that because it makes it a lot easier so that you don't necessarily have to use like the little breakout box and everything to route your cables from the back of your computer to the front to where you can plug the headset in. It just makes it a lot easier to have those cables on the front of the computer because you're most likely not going to have your VR headset plugged in all the time. So that just makes it easier to unplug it and plug it in whenever you need to use it. The final thing is looks. You want to make sure that you get a case that looks good. Some cases have been total flops and nobody understands why the manufacturer made it because it just looks awful. Other cases 
like NZXT cases and Fractal cases just look amazing no matter what. I don't think either of those companies have ever made an ugly case. They always look amazing. But take that into account and make sure that you get a case that looks decent because that is an important part of custom computer building is the looks of it. Almost everybody cares about the looks of the computers when it comes to custom computer building. So that's just our last little thing to keep in mind when we're looking at a computer case. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it helpful in your computer case shopping. Um, make sure you do your research as always. I hope that these points have enlightened you to some areas that you need to look at whenever you're buying a uh, computer. And if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like on it. If you like this channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have advice for future content that I can make, go ahead and leave that down in the comments section below. And I will see you guys in the next video.